Welcome to One on One. I'm Greg Bass, your host from the Salisbury Independent Newspaper. It's a big day here at PAC 14 because we have Caroline O'Hare with us. She's the director, executive director of the Folk Festival here in Salisbury coming up. Welcome, Caroline. Thank you. Thank you for having me. What's your exact title? Local manager. Because Local they, manager. they wanted that to be very exciting. That, Local manager. So the LM title is uh, very exciting. Yeah, yeah. You've got a lot on you. Um, you what you are doing, what, what Caroline is up to right now, she's about to host a party for about 50,000 people. So she's running around cooking stuff and making stuff <laughs> yeah. and cleaning the house and getting ready. Exactly. There's, there's, there's a lot going on in your world. Tell us about it. There is. Um, we're actually looking at sixty to 80,000 people because no pressure. Uh, but we are just months away from hosting the National Folk Festival in Salisbury. Uh, over 350 artists are coming to Salisbury on seven stages of continuous music for three days, and it's completely free to attend. And we can't stop them. They're coming. They're, they're coming. <laughs> and, and that's something I want people to know. This is happening. Yeah. It's happening. It's going to be fun. It's going to be joyful. It's going to be family friendly. And, and it's going to be a success because we were picked over 34 other cities in the nation because we can succeed. Someone had hope in us. Someone uh, saw hope in us. They didn't see, just see hope in us. They, it wasn't just a, a casual, like, let's give them a try. There was a, a, a thorough process that this city went through. And um, not only did they see that we have the abilities, we have the facilities, we have the infrastructure, uh, they saw momentum in our city, and they wanted to be that catalyst that just took us to the next level. So. Very well, exciting. I've made a career out of being the, the sky is falling guy. So for me, this feels like a tidal wave coming. But for you and the others involved, it's just a great opportunity to show Salisbury off. It's an amazing opportunity. Uh, we're very lucky to have the festival coming to us because not only does it bring uh, tourists and uh, uh, old visitors, visitors that are going to look at Delmarva in a new way, it shines the national spotlight on our region because this isn't just a Salisbury thing. This isn't Wycombe. This is Delmarva. This is a Maryland thing. That's why uh, Governor Hogan and Yubi Hogan are, are honorary co-chairs, as well as Jim and Jan Perdue. Uh, they see this as a large-scale statewide event. This is a chance for Maryland to show the best of the best and for us to uh, roll out the red carpet for everyone that wants to come and see what we're about. Now, we had you on when you were first named to this job, and you said, yeah. please have me back in a few months when I figure out what I have to do. <laughs> Um, what have you been doing since you started? It's uh, sort of crazy. Um, I want to say uh, quite a bit. I've had so much support in different areas. So uh, there's marketing, uh, working with Wicomico Tourism, Worcester Tourism, Ocean City Tourism, as well as uh, local and state officials. Uh, Visit Maryland's been a, a huge partner and getting the word out because we need to make people aware that the event is happening. The first and, year, it's very difficult. And that's a tight group of experts who have worked together for very many years. And a lot of people don't know about our local tourism groups. Um, They're how incredible. How professional they are and how they really know what they're doing. Uh, they're truly incredible and in fact uh, those uh, the three uh, groups Worcester, Wicomico and Ocean City uh, were awarded a grant from uh, the Department of Commerce I believe a matching grant to right. help spread the word out of market so we're um, talking about this festival in uh, in Pennsylvania in uh, DC in Baltimore off off the Eastern Shore and uh, really uh, expanding our reach which is uh, very helpful um, and then, of course, so there's the marketing aspect of it, and we have some great media partners. Uh, WMDT uh, is, is working with us, Comcast and Comcast Spotlight. Um, we're looking at uh, uh, newspaper partners. We've been in talks with them, and that's going to come in uh, very soon. And these folks are coming together and saying, we're with you. We're going to support you. We know this is a big deal, and we want to be there at the ground floor. So that's a huge part. 
And then you've got the whole logistics and planning and security, uh, vendor uh, uh, selection, uh, not just production vendors, right. but marketplace uh, vendors, which we've had the most amazing selection of artists apply. Uh, we so these are the musical and performance groups. This is uh, actually the uh, artists and craftspeople for the Jury oh, okay, Marketplace. Okay, okay, gotcha. Right. Just outstanding. And, and the quality of work uh, from all over the state, but especially from our region, is just outstanding. Uh, we these have, people exist and they don't get showcased. This will give us a chance to showcase uh, our local talent. I'm so excited. I, I, I can't wait to announce who the Jury Marketplace, uh, who the members right. will be. But there's that and then Food vendors, we're trying to get a really diverse selection of food. So it isn't uh, just, you know, your typical food, which is great. I love hamburgers. I love hot dogs. I love, you know, great, just basic uh, uh, fair food. Uh, but we want to have, like, dumplings and Korean barbecue and uh, shawarma. And uh, I would love Rosenfeld's. Right. <laughs> you know, get some really great pastrami sandwiches. Just a whole bunch of different foods because this is what this festival is about. It's about seeing things you've never seen before, uh, interacting with artists and, uh, and art that you've never experienced before, tasting food you've never had before. It's, it's a feast for the senses. Yeah, just the idea that people from you know, Baltimore, New York, Washington, Central Pennsylvania can get to try a Hebron uh, fried oyster sandwich, Hebron Fire Department. I mean, that's an opportunity they'll never have, and everyone should try it once. <laughs> everyone should try it once. Uh, you know there will be a, a ton of crab cakes. You yeah. know that. And pit beef and all that fun stuff. And it's also a chance for people that maybe haven't experienced the Eastern Shore before or haven't uh, really explored Delmarva uh, to have that opportunity. I was just in Ocean City this morning talking to a group, and uh, with this amount of people, um, this is not a Salisbury event. This is this is the entire peninsula. This is where people are going to seek out hotels, uh, seek out campgrounds, uh, and 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 uh, Airbnbs and all these fun things across the uh, peninsula. So they'll be able to explore these towns and get to know them intimately while also um, enjoying the festival. Yeah, Salisbury's even had to change its Airbnb rules in order to allow the housing to exist for the people that are coming. Hopefully, yeah, they're in the, I pro they're in the I, process. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know uh, uh, how how we're going on there, but um, yeah. there's so many different ways uh, that you can experience Delmarva. Um, I'm a hotel girl. I like hotels. Uh, my husband <laughs> would be incredibly happy to be camping on a beach somewhere. And there's something for both types of people um, and everything in between. Last time you were here, people were confused. Uh, they said, Folk Festival, what is this, Joni Mitchell's coming to town? W what is uh, folk music, folk festival music? What, what's the music going to be like? Okay, this is my favorite. I love explaining this because um, it, this is how it was expressed to me, and I've really gone to delve into this uh, since starting the position. Um, these are grassroots folk traditions. So if you are from Louisiana, your folk traditions are Cajun or Creole, maybe a, a brass band, something like that. That's your folk tradition. That's what your community, your culture, your religion, perhaps uh, 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 have uh, passed down through the generations. If you're from Chicago, those are not your folk traditions. Yours might be blues or jazz or gospel. If you're from Montana, your folk traditions are neither of these possibly. Maybe they're cowboy music. If you're from Maryland, probably going to be uh, bluegrass. Right. So there are so many different cultures and religions and, and communities. Hip hop. Hip hop is 50 years old. And every time I say that, I feel just a little Isn't bit older. Yeah. Just, it, it, I hate to say it, but I need to say it because that was born out of a community and a culture in the Bronx. Right. That is a folk tradition. And that is part of, uh, uh, part of this festival. It's, it's celebrating all Americans, and that includes uh, the indigenous people that were here at the beginning, all the way to our newest uh, citizens. So we have Chinese Americans, or Haitian Americans, or Korean Americans, or Indian Americans. Um, it's an incredible opportunity to showcase just a world of talent. That's really, and how many stages will be set up? Seven stages. Seven stages. Yeah. And they'll be all over downtown. All over downtown, uh, there are uh, five music stages. There is a dance pavilion, uh, which is incredible. I think it's a 120 by 80 foot tent 
it's it's the place to be Friday and Saturday night. Uh, there's a family area and family stage, and then there's a Maryland Traditions Folk Life area and Maryland Traditions uh, Folk Life stage. So seven stages. And this is all free. It's all free. We do, um, uh, we, the festival is free because we rely on sponsors. We rely on uh, foundations, uh, state support, um, and through per, uh, personal donations. So um, we hope that our community can come together and help and donate what they can. And those that can't get to enjoy an incredible festival and, and maybe they can find a way to contribute in the years to come. If not uh, monetarily, through in-kind contributions or through volunteering, we need a ton of volunteers. Well, you know, I, I picked up uh, my favorite paper, um, <laughs> The Southern Independent, and there's a story wow. here God. that your fundraising is going well. It, it is actually Is that the kind of story do you want? Do you want people to know that you're doing well or do you want them to think you're not doing well so they, they donate more money? <laughs> well, we're on track. Uh, I would say we're a little bit over halfway there. Uh, so uh, one of the ideas that our fundraising committee came up with is a legacy society. Sorry, let me say that again. A legacy society. And uh, what that is, is it's an offer to 300 people in our community. Uh, so it's capped at 300? Capped at 300. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay. Yep. 300 people and uh, to be part of this legacy society uh, and it's uh, a sizable contribution. It's $1,000. Um, I'm actually a member. I am making my donations in quarterly donations That's because right. you can, I cannot. You can finance this basically, which helps people like me, which is exactly. good. Exactly. Yeah. Because I personally cannot afford a sponsorship. Right. I do not own a, uh, a, a dealership or a hotel or th where I could give in-kind contributions. Right. And this is a way for people that have uh, some extra funds that do want to donate and do want to be on the ground floor of something that not only helps support the festival, but really brings our community together. So oh, we're asking uh, for 300 individuals uh, to come in, and they will receive their name on a brick. Uh, mine will be the O'Hare family. And uh, we will create a, a legacy society wall near the new amphitheater that's being built. You know, that's a great idea, because like, my kids' name are, are on a brick at Ben's Red Swings. Oh. And it's just like, it, it's so inspiring for us every time we go by there and see that. I mean. Because look, we live as part of Salisbury forever, and I think that brick at the amphitheater would be really important for people. I, I love Ben's Red Swings. Yeah. I uh, my daughter, we can't go to the zoo and not go to the playground. In fact, right. we probably just go to the playground. But that's an example of a community coming together, seeing a need, and saying we can all pitch in, and do this together. And they create something amazing there. That's beautiful. Yeah. And, and that's what we're doing with our folk festival is we're all coming together as a community. We're lifting each other up and we're going to succeed. I'm very excited about it. Well, your kickoff, you had a little kickoff event at uh, Salisbury <laughs> yeah. University. Yeah, um, just a few hundred people. Yeah, and everyone around me was like, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. And I was like, yeah. no one even thought about it. Uh, the people in that room were incredibly generous. They also are people that are part of our community. Um, and, and every day I'm meeting someone in our community that's like, I'm here to step up. I'm here to be a part of this community. I'm here to help it succeed. And it is sort of incredible. In the beginning, I you know didn't, didn't know such a strong group of, of people right. existed. And it's amazing. Every day I'm surprised by another person. Yeah. The community just stuns you with how, how really great they can be. You know, when uh, the NCTA came and they toured and they met local citizens and city officials and county officials and stuff, um, that's one of the things they look for. They look for that, right. that support and they clearly saw it and I'm so glad that we have that opportunity to show that when we come together, what we can do is incredible. So we'll have this thing for three years officially. Yes. Three years for the national and then when the national moves on to its next host city, um, we will continue on with our own Legacy Festival. So we'll have our own sort of version of it. Yes, the same three-day, large-scale, high production value festival, still free. Uh, Greensboro had their, uh, the last year, the National Folk Festival last year, and this year they're having the North Carolina Folk Festival. Right. So that's their legacy. Uh, in Richmond, Virginia, it's the Richmond Folk Festival. In Bangor, Maine, I believe it's called the American Folk Festival. So they change, I think that's it. Uh, they change the name depending on, like Lowell, Massachusetts, it's the Lowell Folk Festival. But that continues on and that's their legacy. 
Right. Um, if I'm a local artist and I want to participate as a musician or have my stuff, okay. where do I go? What do I do? No problem. Actually, uh, time is sort of running out. Okay. <laughs> I believe the deadline for musical performers is April 30th. Uh, but you could go to our website, which is nationalfolkfestival.com. And on there, uh, under, I think, performer applications, it tells you how to apply. Um, they prefer, and when I say they, I mean the NCTA, who curates all the artists. They select uh, the artist to put before the programming committee for uh, advice. Um, they prefer to go through Sonic Bids, which is an online application thing because it gets them in quicker. Uh, so it's like a little audition online? Uh, sort of. They have certain things you need to send, I think, audio samples, photos. I'm sure there's some sort of press materials and things like that. Um, and if you're not comfortable with that, the second way is you can mail the items directly to me at my office and I then uh, pass them on to the NCTA. That does take a little longer because now you have a middleman. Uh, so if you want to get it in quickly, the best way uh, to do is to go through Sonic Bits. But most of these people are professional enough. They know what to do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, these are people that tour. We have incredible. I, you know, I was thinking about this this morning. We have such incredible artists in uh, this town. Um, and hopefully uh, the NCTA will, uh, you know, see that and, and find the right fit for them. Because, again, they are uh, looking for traditional folk artists. So uh, their two th hallmarks are authenticity and excellence. So you can be excellent. You can be fantastic at what you're doing. But they're also looking for that authenticity. Did you learn it from your your parents and your grandparents and did it get passed down? Is it part of your culture? Is it part of your religion? Is it part of your community? Not so much where if someone's in uh, New York City and they really like, uh, for example, Cajun music and so they go on YouTube and learn how to play Cajun music and they become a great Cajun musician, Right. they're not really from Louisiana. Right. So that authenticity isn't really there. So they're really looking for those two things which are unique. Um, and we have spectacular musicians here. Um, I know a few that have applied. Um, again, I don't know who's been programmed or who will be programmed for the folk life area for the Maryland stage, which will feature only Maryland artists. Uh, but um, it's it's stunning to see the talent in the area. Yeah, years ago, we were in Tampa, and uh, that kind of Hispanic neighborhood that's in the middle of downtown, I forget what it's called, um, and went in there, and they were playing Zydeco music, and I'd never heard oh that before, goodness. and I was just transformed by it. I somehow it was in my DNA somewhere, you know, historically. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some, you were drawn to some it. Some ancestors went through somewhere and heard this stuff, and yeah. and it was in me, and I, I just was just stunned by it. That's what this festival is about. Right. It's about accidentally stumbling onto some music maybe that you didn't seek out in the past or you never experienced before and suddenly being drawn to something and being like, what is that? I need to hear more. I need to learn more. Right. I had that with uh, Salsa in the... Uh, at, uh, at Greensboro. Right. I, I was like, oh, I'll go see Salsa. It was amazing. <laughs> it was, I cannot wait for uh, Salsa Dura to be uh, performed in uh, Salisbury. I've got friends who live in Greensboro and they, they brag about this and they're like, you'll never do as well as, as we did here. Well, um, we're, we're up for the challenge. <laughs> they did an excellent job yeah. and they really did set the bar high. Um, but every festival But they said different. the first year was a little rough, uh, but by the third year they had it together. I mean, imagine yeah. doing anything for the first time. You're going to uh, go one way and then decide to change the next time and, and, and fine-tune it. And that's why festivals that have been going for over 30 years, like Lowell, Massachusetts, uh, the festival that's happening now is not the one that happened in the beginning. They found what worked for them best, and they uh, grew and evolved, and, and they found what their audience liked the most. And and this is not something that happens. It's not a, a magic button. or It's, it's us taking on this challenge, accepting it, succeeding, and evolving. Back to fundraising. Um, I got invited to a fundraiser thing that's going to pit our local high school uh, alumni against each other. Um, and I noticed on the guest list, everyone either went to Bennett or Parkside. I was one of the few Y High people. Okay. So I feel under pressure to sort of step up for Y High. Um, what is this thing? How, what, what, what am I getting into on this? <laughs> 
you're getting into something that actually uh, is a challenge, a high school challenge that was started by or uh, 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 brought up by uh, Randy Day. Right. So that's what happens. So you get a phone call from the from the the CEO of Purdue Farms. You take that phone call and you usually end the phone call by saying yes, sir, doing whatever he wants you to do. So that's what happened here. He was at that kickoff <laughs> yes. in February, and he got up on stage and said, "I have an idea. I went to Bennett." And I am going to challenge the high schools. And he said uh, there was Y High, Parkside, and I think Mardella jumped in yes, there. Yeah. And said, I want to see which of our, our high school alums can raise the most. <laughs> and he's like, I'm from Bennett, so all, all I want to know is who's coming in second. Right. Yeah, I can't compete so, with Randy Day. <laughs> But there's 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 strength in numbers. So it's about it's not about one person right. saying oh I rub. It's it's about uh, creating that that school spirit and that community spirit and having fun and having a little bragging rights. And you would be opposed if other leaders in town created their own little fundraiser no. kind, kind of things I like would that. I love that. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Uh, I think there's uh, you could do it within your own organization. Um, or you could do it within your own school. Or you could, uh, you know, just like softball leagues and things like that uh, that work with different companies, it could be a fun, com competitive uh, uh, thing where we can sort of see who who uh, garners the most um, most uh, either money or volunteers. I know that we're looking at uh, schools to see if there's some sort of competition within the. Um, within these uh, student groups to see, and I'm not sure how this is gonna work out, but we're, we're trying to figure out how to increase our volunteers by saying, okay, which student group will have the highest percentage of uh, uh, volunteer hours and how can they be rewarded? What incentive can we, can we give to them? So there's lots of fun ways to, um, to contribute to this uh, festival. Yeah, when I was a kid growing up in Salisbury, um, the thing that we had that made us different than other towns was the National Indoors Tennis Tournament. It was a big, a big right, deal. Yep. Um, and we were all involved in that and uh, participated, ball boys, whatever. We were all were you went. a ball boy? No, I was too slow, too fat, and too slow to be a ball boy. Um, but you know, I was still in therapy for that. If we're trying not to talk about that. Bill Reardon wouldn't let me be a ball boy. Uh, but went to all the stuff. Was mm -hmm. still very involved and. Um, See, now I'm all screwed up because of that. I'm really... Sorry, you really are upset about it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I... I, 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 I where are we on time? <laughs> you got four minutes. Okay. Um, so at the National Indoors, we were all very involved in that. It was like a really big deal. And, and it was, it was a sort of a, a time and a place thing that made us special. Mm -hmm. And it, it just dawned on me recently, and someone said this, and I made the connection, that the Folk Festival will be like that for a lot of the kids in the community now because it's going to make our community special as part of where they're growing up, that they were a Folk Festival community. Absolutely. It's, it's incredible for, um, for all our citizens. Uh, for our kids, they get the chance to not only interact with these artists and explore these cultures that maybe uh, they've ever, never experienced before or maybe it's part of their culture that they don't see highlighted as often. Right. Uh, so there's that. But then there's um, also that opportunity to be inspired. Um, my daughter uh, just uh, uh, saw ballet for the first time, and now that is what we will be doing for the rest of our <laughs> life. She is in love with it. She will watch classical ballet and listen to this music, and she loves the leaps. Think about a child that sees um, uh, an Indian instrument or sees a... Uh, a a Cajun band, or see, see something, something clicks in them, and they right. go, oh my gosh, this is for me, this is what I want, this is what I want to learn about, this is what I want to do. And when we have arts and culture in our schools and our kids, it just increases their success, it uh, strengthens our community, it reduces, you know, negative things in school, and it's it's such a plus for them, so I'm very excited that that our, our kids are going to be able to see this. They used to have the Renaissance Fair out at Pemberton, and there was a lady out there who, uh, like a sort of a 1500s kind of get up, <laughs> was a tightrope walker. Uh, oh. And she was just amazing how she would walk on this tightrope. She was a big lady. And um, it just, my, my kid was completely mesmerized by this and still talks about it. <laughs> Something as simple as that. So I think there's going to be things like that. Uh, in the Greensboro photos, uh, there's a, a cowboy roper guy. Bryce um, Chapman. Okay, I can't wait to see that. I hope he. I hope he's going to be here because so. I'm. I'm really looking forward His to that. His daughter Grace is 11, and and he's passed that tradition on uh, to her, 
and she joins him on in, in the show. Yeah, so I'm, ex I'm excited about it. That's something relatively simple. Yeah. Yeah, that will make a mark. Uh, volunteers, I'm going to volunteer. I'm looking forward to this. Um, do you know what you want to do? We had Jamie Heater and Laura Kordakowski on yesterday, and they, they decided that I should be the person to uh, maintain the cleanliness of uh, some of the porta potties there by the courthouse. So that's going to be my. I think that's that's an interesting idea. <laughs> that's an interesting. They decided think... my skill set would match match that, but you need volunteers for all kinds of stuff. Absolutely, we need about eight hundred plus volunteers. And we are working with the online volunteer uh, uh, center at uh, shoregetconnected.org. Uh, that's through the United through Way. Through the United Way. It's an, it's an amazing site. And you'll see other <gasps> other kinds of things you can volunteer for on there. We have a, a volunteers committee. And there's someone on that committee that really is excited about being part of the festival, but is ready to volunteer now. So he's been going on to that online volunteer site and, and signing up for things that are happening now or next month because he... He's just into it. He wants to give back to this community. So it's a great way uh, uh, to get involved with the festival. You can donate three hours of your time or three days if you'd like. Uh, you get a free T-shirt. T-shirt. Okay, good. T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> you get a free... I think you should be part of the Bucket Brigade. I think that would be great. That's going to be uh, asking for money? Yes. You're going <laughs> to you take a bucket. You dance around. Give high fives. Give out stickers to people that put a dollar in. I think you would you'd be great at Think it. Think about it. Would you give money to someone who looks like me? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I would absolutely. I think it would be fun. I think porta potty is right. Okay, fine, porta potties. But you, it's, you're. I'm kidding. There's no need for a porta potty volunteer. But no. um, what kind of stuff will the volunteers be doing? You said the bucket brigade. Yeah, there's a ton of uh, different things and and different. Uh, activity levels as well. So we have uh, just recently received a volunteer that signed up that said, I use crutches. So I want to volunteer, but I can't be extremely mobile. Uh, we have uh, information booths, uh, guest check-in for artists, uh, transportation, uh, backstage support, um, bucket brigade, uh, water delivery, um, marketplace uh, vendor support, food vendor support. Uh, I mean, it's pretty incredible. We also need help uh, a few weeks before the festival in set up and then taking down afterwards. Um, I just so want a lot. clipboard and a walkie-talkie. I want to be one of those guys. Done. Okay. We're not going to turn the walkie-talkie on, though. We're just going <laughs> to give you a walkie-talkie without a, without a battery. But you, you get it. It's going to have your name on it. I can't wait. Thank you. Um, do you have any help right now? Are you doing this by yourself, or how's this going? Um, I am... <laughs> What's it like at your office? No. Um, actually, uh, it's interesting. I, as local manager, uh, I am, in a sense, a staff of one. However, I have tremendous support. We have about a dozen committees uh, that advise, do a ton of work uh, in their specific areas, so volunteers, marketing, um, and I've blanked on all the rest. Uh, uh, but wonderful. The uh, family area uh, uh, committee is fantastic. We have an executive committee. So all of them are, are chipping in. And then I have a ton of support from the city. They've been incredible champions, as well as our business community leaders. And, um, and it's really me just picking up the, uh, the phone or reaching out to someone saying, hey, I'd like you to be a part of this, and I need your help. And no one is disappointed yet. Well, just know everyone is rooting for you. Thank you. We want you. I'm want, rooting for Salisbury. We want you to succeed. We want this to succeed, and you're off to a great start. So thank you for that. Thank you. She's Caroline O'Hare. She's the local manager for the National Folk Festival, which will be here in Salisbury on when? September seventh, eighth, and 9th. And it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and it's just going to make our whole fall wonderful. Absolutely. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. I'm Greg Bassett from the Salisbury Independent Newspaper, another edition of One on One right here on Pack 14.
First Shore Federal is proud to support PAC-14 and one-on-one. -on -one. We'd encourage every business to support PAC-14 and, and pick a program and support it and let's make a difference.